What's up, team? How we doing out there? Welcome back to, of course, Start Swing Trading, where we take a look at the swing trading setups out in the market. And of course, talk all about what's going on. What are the biggest movers? Where are the setups? And of course, updates on my trade, my swings. We'll talk all about that right here on Start Swing Trading. Smash the thumbs up. Let's get some other traders in here. Hit the share button down below. Sorry that it took a little bit to get that link up. So I could do see you guys uh, kind of leaking on in here. You guys smash it up so we get some more traders in here. Let's take a look at the market before we get into the trades. You can see here we had a recent spike at 220. What happened there? Well, I did see a mention here from the information. Seems like we got some info on the bank sale there. And the question here um, is that the government would likely only sell Silicon Valley Bank to another bank. Sources say the information is uh, quoted on this. So we're going to go ahead and see, does this really give us the lift? Take a look at day PM, how it reacted at that same level here. 225 got the bounce, but now coming right back down. So this is when that I've been focused on all day long, seeing the weakness in JP Morgan and the banks overall. Let's go to some of these. Bank of America holding on today. It's actually up from the open. It opened at 2783. We're at 2844. But of course, Bank of America was already coming down there towards the lows. It's trying to hold on to kind of daily level recovery here from, of course, Monday's action closed, which was 2851. But right there, 2841s. Will we get below that close and keep coming on the downside? Goldman Sachs coming down below those levels today. That one definitely taking a hit. Bigger banks just running through those right now and taking a look. Now I will give you guys an update on one that we closed today for a big winner. Definitely, definitely team. I got to go ahead and mention it. It's probably the biggest winner of the month for us. Nice win in, of course. What was it? The bank trade. We went with Morgan Stanley here. We started doing this one on Thursday last week from, of course, 95s up here. Now down to 85.54 today. Was able to take final profit in this trade towards what? Towards 84 team, got 84 right on the dot as it came down to it. I was like, all right, I'm getting a little greedy here. This is for me an 11.8% win on the remaining shares here for Morgan Stanley. So not going to be mad about that at all. Really great swing trade here with Morgan Stanley. Look at the daily. Look where we're closing it at. Really nice move here. So not going to be too mad about this one. You guys can See it there, 11.8% on Morgan Stanley. I'll take it any day. All right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some other major banks. How's that going on? And how are the regional banks doing today? Take a look, KRE, the easy way on the ETF outlook. You can see we're bouncing on the names, but this looks like it wants to go a little lower. That's where I'd be a little bit concerned. I know that the SPY spiked up a little bit here towards 388, but I'm not feeling too confident about the overall market. Going to see if we can get back towards 400. But if we come back towards 380, I could see us taking out this 378 and maybe taking out the October lows. We'll find out about that. Will the SPY come right back down and take out the trend line, right? That's what we're looking for. Today, we kind of cut through that, now bouncing back, right? That's what we're looking at. Are we going to come lower towards the 380s? Or are we going to bounce up through the 395 level? Catching up with the chat. How are we doing out there? Daniel, SRT8, Walter, Easy Mike. How are we doing out there? It's good to see you guys. Talk, uh, talk to me about INTC. Yeah, we can get into some value names, at least value tech, right? All I see is dead cat bounce to trap the bulls, says SRT8. And you could be right, right? I mean, we did get that bounce in the banks. I definitely think that that JP Morgan was more of that trap look where it was looking really bullish yesterday. Today looks really bearish. So we'll see what happens there. Let's talk all about that. And I do see you guys mentioning different names. We'll get into those. Got no problem. Definitely checking them out. All right. Smash the like button. Let's get to my other trades here, team. 
was finally able to take some profits. And there's one thing that is very important, team, and it happens very often. I can tell you right now, as a trader, you're always going to be doing what? Working on our strengths and trying to better our weakness, right? What's my weakness? Well, one of my weaknesses that when I get out of a trade, let's say stopped out of a position, it's very hard for me a lot of the times to turn back around when the name is coming back through those levels or I see a major rejection on those levels to get back into the name. And in this case, the oil names were very similar play. So yesterday, very early on in the day, I got stopped out for very, very small losses. Why? I wanted to keep the levels really tight on the upside and look for that expansion to the downside. Of course, most of those names got stopped out, three of them, Valero, Oxy, and Chevron, right? Valero, we had already taken profits on, and I was doing what? I was holding break even on the rest. So break even on Valero, really small loss on Oxy and Chevron. Later in the day, I redirected. What does redirection mean, right? Well, I felt that I was out of the zone and I needed to get back into the zone. So what did I do? I went to the things that I love, right? Well, one of my tricks is catching a little bit of the prices right when I'm on my little break here. And that gets me right back into the positive mentality, focused, I came back to the desk and took some swings on Chevron and Oxy. This is where it gets difficult, right? Getting back into that trade is very difficult for me. This time, I wanted to work on that because I had the high conviction and I didn't want to lose that high conviction. And where was that high conviction coming from? It was coming from a combination of things, right? The catalyst that's going on in the Middle East. It seems like there's a lot going on with oil, OPEC, whether you think about it with Saudi Arabia, whether you think about it with what happened with kind of like Iran and Israel deal, there's a lot of situations out there. I feel like supply could come online. Of course, the U.S. is looking to replenish the reserves. And I'm also seeing what? Crude come down. Crude kept coming down today. And let's talk a little bit about that. It did get a bounce around like, let's say, 1 o'clock. But we're bounced to 68 and we're holding below the 70 mark. We went all the way down towards around 65.80, 65.50 on WTI. And now I'm just going to keep watch to see if this doesn't go back up into the 70 handle. If it does, we could get another pop in oil. But if it keeps coming lower, I could keep riding these names a little bit lower. Let's talk a little bit about those names. First one up, Chevron. Let's take a look at this trade. All right. Well, if you see here, Chevron, nice little trade. Yesterday, we got this one right around VWAP. 161.95. So if you if you look at that, VWAP right there was 161.89. So we got it actually slightly above VWAP. It got that first takedown, was able to take some profits into this first move. And then today we were able to take some more gains on Chevron. Let's talk a little bit about those gains here. I'll go ahead and give you guys that. My final uh, gain that I took down here on that down move that's going to be closer towards 154.09. So as you were coming through this 154.09, I took some more profits on right here when you got this little crack here through the 154. And right out the gates, I took some profits also on this name at 154.58. So as this came down, I got this cut through towards 154.41. And good gains here. I mean, right now I'm sitting on about 5.24%. So if you guys see, we're slightly below this entry. So we took 5.5%. Now I'm really looking to see if I can make about 8% on the name. Top gain for me on that 8% and I'll take it and run. Let's go to another oil name that I was able to take profits on, which was Oxy. You guys, I got this one yesterday at 6070. So that was slightly up here on this little bounce back here when it bounced on the VWAP. And then it got the takedown, was able to take some profits and into the moves today, taking some more profit on this one. So first profit was here on Oxy at 57.94. So 57.94, as soon as it cracked into the open, I wanted to take some profits as it was declining all pre-market. I thought it could get a little bit of a bounce, took some profits right here and then wanted to continue to let this one work as it broke through that 58 and kept coming lower. 
was able to take next profit on this one at 5609. And that's how after we went through 56 here, started bouncing back above it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take my money and run. Uh, can't go mad about this. Took another profit on Oxy right here. And now got to continue to let this work. I'm up about 6.2%. 60.70 is still the average. Just going to continue to work. If this one can come lower through that 55, we could get a major breakdown. There is support over here around the 55. Through that is 50. So if we could get continued downside in crude, I could see us getting towards that 50 in Oxy. And I know a lot of people tell me, but Mitch, you shorted Buffett. You don't short Buffett. Well, the truth is, is that he's looking at this in a longer term trade, right? I'm looking at this in a shorter term swing. I can make some profit in between his outlook. And I think a lot of people are relying on him to get in on this name because this is his buy zone, right? Well, the truth is we don't know if he is going to buy here. So if anything, those bulls are hoping that he buys here and the bears are coming in and ready for the takedown. We'll see what happens here in Oxy. All right, let's get out of Oxy. Let's talk about in the chat. What's going on out there? I see you guys saying I'm holding uh, city. I'm up on FRC from the lows. Shout out to you, Jared. If you're able to knock that one down. Hey, that's not a bad trade at all. Good day. Interesting volume at points today. I agree, Walter. There was some push all throughout the day. The EU backstopping CS is bullish midterm. Yeah. It definitely going to help out, right? But is there more contagion, right? Do we got to worry more about our banks? That's one thing that we need to keep in mind, right? This is why I know that some people are going after like names like FRC, but it's not my type of swing. And that's why I'm trying to stay away from the regional banks because the truth is, is that how do I manage my risk on a name like this? You kind of don't. This is kind of more to me like a naked option trade and not only naked, but you're like telling yourself, well, hey, I I'm just going to either take it or it's going to go uh, expired worthless. That's how I feel about these. I feel like they're more YOLOs than anything, but I can't blame you for going at it, Jared. If you think you can nail this and you got it at the low and you think it's going higher, then by all means, take the trade. Like I always tell people. It's, I can't tell you what to trade. I can't tell you it's a good or bad trade. To me, what matters more is what? It's going to be how you go about the trade, right? The process. What's your strategy? What's the risk to reward? Those are the type of things that I like to focus on. And like I always say, if you know you're out, you can essentially take any trade. The real key is can you execute to that out, right? Or are you just going to let it wash through that out and then get a much uh, more significant loss, right? That's not what we're looking for. Let's get into these names and take a look into the market today. Let's go to the sectors that were hot today. And then we're going to go into looking for some more trades because we might take some right now. So smash the like button. Let's keep going. Capitalismo shorting Tesla. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Let's just take a little peek right quick. How is Tesla doing here? I'm going to take off some of these numbers. You can see how you kind of rejected that up move today. Um, rejected that like kind of like 185 area. That's what I'll be looking for to see if we're going to make a comeback here towards the 185. That's a good level to kind of watch here. Just slightly above here. Uh, right here. 184, 97s. You can round that up just to 185. You get back through there. I think you could get to the 200, but if you reject one more time from there and then come back down to 165, I think 150s are in reach. Uh, one thing to note though on Tesla, and I like to note this only on the daily levels, is that it's almost to the point where it's getting to the oversold side. So I think you could get one more kind of whoosh, maybe fill in this gap and then be careful because you could get another lift. Tesla's one that on swings, I like to definitely take some profits and hold break even. But to each his own, right? You got to determine how you come after this one. All right, how we doing, Captain? Cranking it, cranking and baking. We're shaking and baking. That's what I like to hear out there, Captain. Get that money. We'll do it. All right, let's take a look here. What else is making moves? Let's go to what was hot today and what was not. Of course, you guys see utilities leading the way here today but really did it make a move 
not really, not not too much. It's just been going sideways here. It's been trying to make a move. So keep your eyes on like a Nextera energy, trying to get a little bit of a bounce here. This one doesn't look too bad. Did finally get back above the 75 range. So I'd look for maybe pullbacks to 75 to hold and then look for this one to kind of make that move to 76. We'll look to see if we get that cut down through again and then the next move up for 76 on NEE. Duke, of course, Duke Energy. This is another one to keep watch if you like the utility names. Really, not really what is up my alley. I have traded these in the past. Um, on Duke, I actually lost there for that kind of short. I've talked about this plenty of times above that 105. Um, but we'll see what happens to these. They are getting a little bit of a bounce back. Let's go to the defensive names. Defensive names, I was taking a look to see if Kroger was going to get the lift today. And look at that move there, team. Look at that. That's a nice breakout there, team. I hope you guys were catching live trading. I know I talked about this one. Why? Because if the market's going down and we're going to go for these defensive names, we got to keep an eye out on Kroger. Kroger had just done a 9 a.m., uh, 9 EMA pullback here towards the 4650s looked good to get back above this high 4750 today and then really make the move boom 4750 you get above you try to hold this on pullback 4754 now you're continuing higher take a look at these because i think they could start getting a move on i've talked about sprouts farms i had this one at 33 was it was got got stopped out on this one like 3280s I'm looking back at it. Maybe tomorrow's the day that we can get Sprouts Farm to really make that move. We'll see what happens if we get continued downside action. All right, let's keep going. We could take a look at some other names to keep taking a look at what's doing well today. Pharmaceutical retailer is doing well today. WBA, Walgreens Alliance, getting a little bit of a lift there. Pets, getting a little bit of a push. Rad is down still on the day. And let's see if there's anything else moving here. Not much. I would just look at Walgreens. Uh, let's go to the daily chart. Daily chart is down there towards the lows. So it could just be bouncing off that 33 level. Not necessarily anything that I'm just like jumping out of my, my seats for. Uh, let me see if this was news related on why it was up today. Just want to take a look, a little peek here. Walgreens looks towards healthcare segment to renew growth. Uh, Walgreens overpunished and offering an attractive dividend, said a partner, but I don't see too much news here on Walgreens. You do have earnings about 13 days from now, so just to keep that in mind. All right, getting out of the, the consumer defensive names, you guys can keep watch maybe discount stores um, in, in those defensive names. Walmart with a little bit of a turnaround. That's not a bad outlook there. Costco, I mean, you know how Costco will target I'm not touching Target here, team. It's a little bit scary for me on Target. So we'll see what happens there. But I don't like Target one bit right now. DG, now this looks a little bit better. This looks like kind of some bottoming action coming back here, right? So let's see if we can come back to actually fill this if we start having positive motions in dollar general. So one thing I could see here about the 215 recovery today very important recovery as you get back above there. I'll look for pullbacks at 215 to hold, but definitely Dollar General does not look too bad for an opportunity. I'll keep this one on my mind. All right, Dollar General, uh, Dollar Tree is another way we can take a look at this, right? Dollar Tree reports, right? I think, let's take a look here. I think it's either Dollar General or Dollar Tree reports coming up. Let's take a look. Dollar General, oh, tomorrow, Dollar... Dollar General, DG, hmm, reports tomorrow before the open. Hmm, is this why we're seeing DG get that lift? There you go. You, you got to pay attention to those stocks that are going to have the earnings, right? I know I was watching this one before on Dollar Tree. We we're going to look to see if this one was going to get the Dollar Tree lift after their earnings. Now it's setting up for the move. I just don't know if I want to take a stock that's already gone about uh, I mean, it hasn't gone too far from the VWAP, about 1.2%. I know I don't want to play an earnings play on a night like this, but I'm going to leave it alone. DG, we'll see how this comes out tomorrow. And of course, this will be before the market open. So catch this team. All right, household products. Of course, you guys can keep your eyes on things like this. This would be more of that value trade coming into play, like Colgate, Palmolive, uh, PG, 
So take your look at those names to see if they really start getting moving. I won't be trading these until I really see a move. Last time I traded these on just a little bit of a glimpse, it just didn't hold. ELF, Elf Beauty, probably might take a next step as Ulta Beauty pulls back here to 509, now getting another bounce here. Will this come back up towards the 530s? We'll find out on Ulta. All right, catching up in the chat, DG in every small town in Midwest. And I mean, it's pretty much everywhere, Jared. I don't think there's plenty of places that don't have a Dollar General, but that's just, I mean, maybe it's just the places that I live in, Jared. Uh, but Bruce took a long put on NVIDIA. Hmm, that is truly interesting. Let's get into some of those names. Let's go into the technology names. That's going to be your fourth leading sector from the open. And that's why I pay attention from the open today, because if you paid attention to the overall change, technology is down. But from the open, it's up about 0.52, 0.41 just a second ago. But that tells me a lot. It's something that we need to keep an eye out for, right? Some names were positive in tech. And where were they? They were in our leaders. I'm going to talk about what Bruce was looking at on NVIDIA, but I do want to point out that our leadership, green today, actually. Take a look at Apple here towards the close. Really strong. Take a look at Microsoft. Not a bad day at all. Take a look at Google. Not a bad day at all on Google. I've been talking about this 90 spot. Man, this 89.94, right back up to 96. 6% there on Google. Now it looks like they're holding 95 as this starts to push. This looks great here for Google. I'll be looking for pullbacks. And this is why I'm a little bit concerned. This is what could actually lift us up out of this, right? If we do get out of the bank worries, will we be more in the mood that we're looking for the pivot early and that we can get a run in these tech names? That's something to keep in mind. A lot of these stocks making a big push. Let's go to NVIDIA here. Early in the day, it was coming down into the red. Now turned around up there to 242, trying to break through. We'll go ahead and talk about what uh, Bruce was talking about. A long put there on NVIDIA. Strike 240 based on 242 pass resistance with a target profit range of 235. We'll see what happens on this one. Doesn't look too bad there. Um, it is getting a little bit of a bounce back. NVIDIA Will it take through these highs or will it just create another topping here around the 242 level? You can see you've had multiple topping action there. If this turns around towards 230s, I think you could break down towards 220s. But if you get back through, back towards 242, watch out. You could be making that run to 250. We'll see what happens there on NVIDIA. If NVIDIA is looking great on that bounce back, AMD is going to be looking Better, I feel. Look at that move here on AMD. Big push up through this high now, 88.22s. I remember when I played it on this day, and man, I should have been looking for some pullbacks because we did get a great opportunity on Monday as this came back and now already back on Monday's closing price, which was 82.01 to where we are right now. That's about 9.72%. Big move there for AMD. And you could see continued upside. Let's go to Intel. I know someone wanted to talk about Intel in the chat. Intel, looks to me like you're finally getting more of that bottoming action here. Let's go to the weekly, and you can see a little bit more here. If we can actually get back above 30s, that's kind of the level that I would be looking for, right? If we can get back above 30, 38, really start pushing back towards 35, I could keep an eye out on this. Other than that, I'll look to see if we break down back through 25 on the downside there. But it's nothing that makes me just jump out of my shoes, but something to keep on watch, especially if you have now have three green weeks here for Intel. Can they make it towards the 30 before the end of the week? Doesn't seem too bad. And if you look at it, essentially you're up on like the last five trading days. So keep that in mind. Great call by Triple D this AM. Yes, yes, yes. 150%. If you guys don't watch pre-market prep, what are you doing? Look down right now. Hit right click. Hit new window. Get on to pre-market prep. Don't miss it, team. That's the hottest show out there, pre-market. If you guys want to go ahead and get ready for your trading day, definitely check out pre-market prep. Starts every single morning 
at 8 a.m. and goes into just about 9 a.m. Eastern. So smash the like and great call, I agree, by Triple D today on what? Mega Cat Tech. You can see they're getting a nice little lift. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look at some other names. Intel getting that nice little push. Let's take a look at some of the other ones and how they're doing towards the close here. Jesse wants to take a look at T-Mobile, TMUS. Let's take a look. T-Mobile is bouncing off this 140. This 140 has been definitely a level to look at. One thing that I would say on T-Mobile is look at the monthly chart. Monthly charts look a lot better on a name like this. And you can clearly see what? We're in an uptrend. I mean, overall, since about this kind of like 2019, you've had pullbacks and you did get this major pullback to 110, which was a great opportunity. But this stock has remained strong. On the weeklies, it also remaining strong. Now you need to see if you're going to make that move towards 150. Uh, 150 is going to be very vital to get through that level. You can see here on the weeklies, you've been trying to get up here. You've had a couple of wicks. Let's see if we get back there towards 149.50s and 150 for the breakout there in T-Mobile. All right, catching up with the chat. What's going on out there, Captain Kirk? Lan, Amy, you want to take a look at Goog L? I got you. I can take a look at Goog L. I always look at Goog, uh, but let's go to Goog L. All right, let's take a look there. Bounce off the 90s also, but just slightly below that. Let's go to the daily levels. It looks to me like the 90 keeps holding here. Got the reversal back to 96. We'll look to see if this now holds 90 for sure. On the daily, I wouldn't want it to break that 90. I want it to come back through the 100 on this Google. If it comes back through that 100, especially the break above 95s now. So I'll be looking for pullbacks to 95. I'll go ahead and I'll set an alert there. And we'll see what happens here on Google if it can get to 100 again. It was above the 100 towards 107, then pulled back because of the AI mentions, right? All right, let's keep going. What else is being mentioned out there? SNB, as, uh, the Swiss National Bank, SNB, uh, asserts that the problems of certain banks in the U.S. do not pose a direct risk of contagion for the Swiss financial markets. I think these are all talks. Really, to tell you the truth, Walter, how many how many uh, people have said that it doesn't have any like effects, and then we find out, and like the next day, it does have an effect, right? I, I wouldn't believe the talking heads right now. That's just the truth, and I'm a talking head, and I'm telling you that, right? Nobody knows the contagion right now. If they did, they wouldn't tell you. Why? Because they'd make money off of it. Let's just be honest. And so the people that are telling you that the banks are all good, are probably working for the banks. I don't trust them. If not, I wouldn't be you know, going through this, right? We wouldn't be going through this situation. I wouldn't trust a lot. Uh, I would, everything right now with a grain of salt, right? If they're talking about the banks, I don't trust them. I don't know what's going on, but I'll tell you one thing. I ain't going to go on trusting what the talking heads are saying. I mean, if you'd listen to that, You'd be listening to my man, uh, you'd be listening to Kramer, right? With JPM. It's a fortress. You're okay. It's a fortress. Well, you guys see how JPM has started to come down, right? That's why I'm not doing it, team. I'm just not doing it. If they say it, let it just go right back to the side and really look at the banks. Look at the price action. What is that telling you? I'll tell you one thing that I'm worried about. Will we get some worries from Deutsche Bank? One bank that I am concerned about, right? You got to keep an eye out on what's going on in this. And I'll tell you one thing. I'm not going to push into these banks and get crushed. All right, catching up out there. What's going on? Holla, bud. Sold CJJD way too early. It happens, Carmen. Happens to the best. Watch the drop at the close, said Captain. Tick tock suckers buying here. Ouch. We'll find out, right? We'll find out what goes on there. Uh, Jay mentioning put call uh, ratio flying again. I'm sure. Uh, let's take a look here. Walter, haha, I'm sure I'm just passing along the message. Yeah, we'll see what happens there, man. It's it's a tough one. What do I think about MTC? I got you. I'll take a look at that one. Let's, let's take a look here. MTC. 
All right, MTC is definitely pushing on the day. This is a cheaper name, and don't worry. We take a look at some cheaper names here. So if you guys have one of these names, feel free to bring it up. And smash the like, guys. I see 100 of you guys and more of you guys out there. So let's see if we can get to 75 likes today. If you guys like, start swing trading the show that brings you swing trading setups right here, live in front of you guys. And you guys know it. I take some trades live. We'll see what happens right now. Oxy's just hanging on to the thread by the VWAP. So if I was looking at something right now, at least day trading wise, I'd be looking at the drip drip. We were talking about drip today right off the VWAP here on the 1750s. That was a nice little move. I just didn't want to triple dip in oil. That's where it gets difficult, right? Well, it definitely worked out right now. We'll see what happens in the next uh, kind of the next day, right? Will we get continued downside in the oil names? All right, let's keep going. That's exactly what SVB CEO said. Exactly. I, I, I'm not trusting any of them. Liars, all of them. I, I'd rather focus on that than trust the talking heads that are out there. And you guys know it. I'm on financial media, and even I'm selling that. So just be careful out there, team. Swinging Amazon shorts. Why, SRT8? Why Amazon short? How would you want Amazon short? Just let me know. I mean, to each his own, right? You can have a solid plan on that. Just let me know why on the Amazon. Hear that noise? It's the perma bull scream here in 10 minutes. I hear you, Captain. We'll take a look. BBW. Build a bear workshop. Carmen, they're not going to break this, man. I'm telling you. If they break this, I'll, I'll be surprised. I can tell you right now, I tried shorting. Build the Bear Workshop. Let's just say no bueno did not work out for me. So I'm not going back to it. It's on the off list, the banned list. Um, but definitely uh this this stock just doesn't want to go away. It does even it did pull back, but it hasn't filled the gap on the downside. Could keep going. I'll tell you right now, I'm not getting in front of Build the Bear Workshop. There's no reason for me to think that this stock should continue gaining. But I'll tell you right now, that, that doesn't stop stocks, right? We can't sometimes just trade with our emotions. My emotion tells me to short the hell out of Build-A-Bear. But that's not everything, right? Price action leads. Price action tells me, stay away, Mitch, stay away. I'm going to leave it alone. Listed as a squeeze candidate, and I agree. I agree. Listed as a squeeze candidate, that's for sure. And it can squeeze. I, this is that type of stock, right? High short interest, people thinking like I do. No one goes to build a bear anymore. Little do they know. Seems like, and I've asked some parents, it seems like they definitely still go to build a bear. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look at what else is going on. Neil says, follow the money. You never know, right? Never bet against lady stuff or kids. Yeah, definitely not lady stuff. I'll tell you right now. Or if you guys like Ulta, I'll tell you right now, never bet against that one. I'm not betting against a company that has a track record like this, right? Just be careful out there, team. All right, let's go to Spy. Maybe it hits 20 on Build-A-Bear. We'll see. Build-A-Bear used to transfer illegal stuff too? <laughs> I don't know about all that, Daniel, but who knows? Maybe they are using uh, the Build-A-Bears to do some smuggling action. Hopefully not, man. That's where the kids go. So I hope that statement isn't true, Daniel. But, you know, I hear you bringing it up. All right, SPY right now. Let's take a look here. SPY just hanging out here off the 389. Rule of three. I talk about this all the time, right? Let's, let's take a look at this, right? So up one, down one. Up two, down two. Up three, down three. We'll see if we get above here for the break. And below here for the breakdown. So that's a 387 move, or I would look for a candle on a 15 minute time frame closing above 389 for the upside action. We'll see what happens there. Uh, bad Bath and Beyond example hanging by a nail. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Hanging by a nail for sure. That, that's going to disappear, man. I don't think there'll be many Bed Bath and Beyonds anymore uh, in the long run. I feel bad for the people that just got caught investing in this. 
All right, let's keep going. We'll take a look at some of the technology names. I did see solar was strong earlier in the day, but how's solar looking now? I do see someone mentioning a solar name in the chat. So I wanted to take a look really quickly. How did these do from the open? Hmm. They were doing good and they turned around. It seems like some of these were doing decent, like max N out the gates, right back down. Um, what was the one that I caught this morning that was doing pretty decent? Uh, was it EMPH? No, it was not EMPH. There was another one that was getting a nice little lift. I don't got it now, but oh, FTCI was also getting a nice little lift, but that's a penny play. Um, Solar names, not looking the strongest. And I think that's just more about the market, right? I was thinking about shorting uh, FSLR, right? When we shorted here and I did get a nice little swing short, took profits on first solar, but then I got stopped out on the move back. That's where it's more like, do we come back after these names? You got to be careful there. I've taken a long on SDGG and a short on first solar. Tell you what team, I'm just trying to hang out outside of the solar names right now. But this Jinko Solar tells me that, hey, we could be turning around there. So watch out EMPH, people that were looking for that to kind of come back up because First Solar was staying strong. Look how EMPH actually looks weak right now. This looks bearish to me on EMPH. We'll find out if we break through the 200 and come lower. Weak oil makes solar less attractive. Good mention there, Jay. I do agree with that. What sectors are you using and where do you find them in your broker? So really what it's all about here is what you see me doing here, team, is all about kind of intermarket analysis. That's what you call this, right? And a lot of this is more relationship thinking, right? So uh, you guys see me using sector outlooks here and you guys see these have like these weird symbols. Why they have the weird symbols is because they're in equally weighted index in that sector. So TC has these weekly, uh, these indexes that they make and they're equally weighted. This is why I use these versus let's say using like XLC for, or kind of, uh, you can use any of the spiders, right? Um, you're looking at, let's say financials, right? You can look at XLF or I could look at it on an equally weighted outlook. I, I like to look at equally weighted. Why? Because it helps me really find the relative strength. When I look at like an XLF, I'm going to be looking at the top names. They make up majority of the ETF. So essentially the majority is what leads this ETF, not when it's equally weighted. It's going to have less of a significant move, but I like the equally weighted index. And I'm working from technology, which is a sector and then on the right-hand side, these are all the industries in technology, like computer systems, data storage. And I'm working backwards, not forward. I'm not looking at the name that's big and then looking at the industry and sector. I'm looking at sectors that are moving, industries that are hot, and then looking for stocks and relationships that are in those industry and sector. That's all rotation. And it's very important. I love it, team. Rule of three, baby. Down goes Amazon. I could easily take profit, but it's a swing strategy. There. Shout out to you, SRTA. And sometimes it's okay to take some day trade uh, profits. I think one thing you got to always keep in mind is like kind of the, you know, the taxes and, and keep in mind that kind of mentality and how many day trades you have if you're under the PDT rule, right? Things like this you need to keep in mind always, especially if you're under that PDT rule. But that's just kind of, me just talking up here, right? Amazon, you're looking at the rule of three coming into play on that one and coming right back down. We'll see what happens there. I can say at least on the hourly chart, you've had a lot of topping in this area, right? So we'll see what happens here. A lot of topping in this area, right? Will it just come right back down and kind of take out these lows? I draw a little pattern like this and would it really wouldn't want to see it kind of get to 99 or 98. Want this to come back down towards 91. If I'm kind of get short on these names, we'll find out there on Amazon. All right, it's 341. Let's keep it going. Let's take a look at what else is being brought up. Okay, I don't have the ability to view those sectors on a trade like SX20. Yes, Prince, if you're looking at SX20, that's of course the consumer cyclical. Then you'd want to go ahead and look at the according kind of spiders uh, ETF. The consumer cyclical one is, I always get this one wrong. Uh, it's staples, right? You'd go to like the XLP, 
right? And so you could go to this one, XLP. This is going to give you more consumer staples and you guys can maybe kind of take a look at this. But of course, then you got to look underneath the hood. What's moving there, right? So like KR, a company we talked about, Kroger's, Tyson getting a little lift, Kimberly, Tat, Walmart in there, Procter Gamble, Clorox, Colgate Palm Olive. So you get the kind of the gist, right? You're working backwards, not forward. Work from the sectors to the industries and then work to the stocks to find relative strength. All right, utilities up. Is that flight to safety? Yeah, I think it is, but I think that's more long just kind of anywhere to hide. They don't. I don't think they expect the utility just to get crushed. And so it could just be rotation somewhere to hide. What do you think about CCL before earnings? CCL, let's take a look. I will let you guys know, I am going to be taking a cruise. So I don't think I could be that bearish on cruise lines overall, Daniel. I'm going to be doing a Royal Caribbean, though, not a carnival. No party boat for me. Um, but we'll see what happens on Royal Caribbean. Carnival coming down here to 873. Is it earnings tonight? Let's take a look here. Earnings are in 12 days, Monday, March 27th, before the market open. So keep your eyes on to see what happens here on Carnival. I think it could come back down towards the lows, maybe towards this eight, somewhere in between this like seven spot. So I'm looking for pullback opportunities here, but it needs to come real cheap. We're talking cracking through this, this 810 and going back down and creating maybe like a double bottom on the monthly at 610. 611, my bad. Um, so we'll see if we come back down towards that 52 week low, 611. I know I'm not stepping in on Carnival anytime soon. So we'll find out if we could get that breakthrough eight. That's the first level I see. We'll see what happens there on Carnival. You can see, I don't feel that this is bullish right now. Big reason why is that I don't feel like taking too many upside outlooks when the banks still are dealing with these issues. If there was no bank issue, yeah. Carnival's on a nice pullback. I could think about it. But right now, there's too many issues right now for me to be taking too many long swings when we could come back tomorrow and what? Oh, this bank is getting destroyed or this bank is getting destroyed and we're down significant. Well, then I would feel like a, no offense, but a dummy for playing some longs and swinging long when there's so much uncertainty to the downside. It's not uncertainty to the upside. It's uncertainty to the downside. So with that being said, yeah, I'm not going to go ahead and just get uh, long a bunch of names right now today. I'm trying my best to just stick on names that I could see continued downside action come in, which are the oil names. All right, that's uh, 344. Let's take a peek back into the SPY. SPY did come back down towards that 387. What does it do? doesn't close there. And that's the important thing also that I talk about on the rule of three often is that you want to see when we're stopping stocks are closing. The closing of the candle matters more than the wick. The wicks, a lot of times I talk about this, they can be tricks. So be careful out there, team. All right. Um, I'm negative 1.61% today. I'll take the win. Hey, that's still a win. Being sometimes just being just slightly negative is not bad. That means you did your job today. You manage your risk. You tried to get some probability in your favor. If it doesn't go, sometimes it doesn't go. Did you set your sector index up through BZ? No, I did not yet. Um, I have to kind of keep pushing through. Um, I could just kind of pull these watch lists. If you guys always want to see what's going up, what's coming down, you guys can always hit me up, Bug. Hit the like. Definitely smash it up, Prince. Appreciate you. Jets, bad five days. Yeah, the airline's coming down fast, team. Uh, American Airlines, I talked about 14 would be the level that I'd look for a long-term kind of pullback. You're already there. And I'm not touching this with the bank situation that's going on. Um, it's just a little bit too concerning for me. And do I want American Airlines? Yeah, I want it. But who knows? I might get an opportunity for this to come right back down to here towards 1268s, even lower back towards like $10. If that happens, I have no problem going after American Airlines for a longer term bet. But this doesn't look bullish either because you did try to make a move up through this monthly kind of level, right? So if you see here on the monthly, you did try to make that move through here and you couldn't do it. So we couldn't make that move back up there 
and now we're coming right back down. Are we going to hold down here or are we just going to get crushed through these levels down here? Something to keep in mind. We'll see what happens there. All right. Um, great. Now we'll, now we don't want to offend the dummies. Yeah. You know how it is, man. It's just how it is nowadays. And the truth is it's all about you guys, right? I can make my decisions. You guys got to make yours. And that's what trading is truly about. It's building our decision skills, probability outlook, learning into the market of how we can go about it, right? Different strategies. But I think a lot of that is just going to depend more and more on how you build up your skills. I can't take the trades for you guys. We'll see what happens. All right, let's keep going. Uh, you got it. You got it, Cap. Still tinkering with mine. I see you guys out there. Walter, Cap, I see you guys working together. Doesn't look too bad. If AAL goes below $12, I'm in it for long term. I'm with you, Bug. We'll find out. Uh, I, it's not that I don't like American Airlines. I like it. But there's too much bank situation right now. But once this turns around, and if we see that the Fed is going to pivot early or stop raising rates, why not, team? Why not get that upside action? And with that being said, we just need to get through this banking situation, I feel like. That's where the concern truly is right now. And that's why I'm a little bit worried as you see kind of like JPM just come right back down, team. Be careful out there, team. I'll tell you right now, I'm not stepping in front of any bank. If anything, I took profit on Morgan Stanley today because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if one of these banks is going to step up, right? We got a message from the information that the government would likely only sell Silicon Valley Bank to another bank. What if one of these major banks steps up and takes that? Will they get majorly hit off of that? That's what I'm keeping in mind. That could leave Morgan Stanley a downturn or maybe it's JPM and all of a sudden Morgan Stanley takes a hit on it. I don't know what's going to happen here. Too much uncertainty, team. So that's why I'm not taking more bets in the financials. Oxy rejecting that VWAP fade. Now looking great as we start coming back down here. I can make more bets on oil, but we're just going to continue to what? Let the market work in our favor. And especially when we're seeing like the XLE now really looking like it's cracking. I talked about this on Friday. Would we really crack here on the XLE? It did not look good here. And we created this on what? March 8th. So just to get it in perspective, right? When was March 8th? That was on Wednesday. We were looking at this already, looking for the break. Thursday came, we started breaking on this. We went to 83.70. We closed below this, started looking for oil to break down. Now we're getting that breakdown. Now it's just going to be more of a matter of does it catch a bounce or does it completely wash out? All right, we'll see what else is going on. Google strong compared to the market, 100%. Those bigger names still strong on the day. Let's take a look at Google here towards the close. They get up there to 97, now pulling back here with the market. Market just kind of starting to crack through that 387. So it looks like you might get a little decline. Let's see if we can get a 15-minute candle to close down there. And just to kind of mention that, this 15-minute candle will close at the end of the day. So we'll find out. Did we close below 387 or did we close back above 389? That's what I'll be looking at here towards the close. Smash the like, Bug. Appreciate you. Love this show. That's what it's all about, team. I think, you know, swing trading, uh, I, I, I say it in the description here all the time and I kind of laugh, but a lot of day traders end up doing what? Moving into swing trading, right? And why is that? Because they feel they can start managing their risk a lot better and they can look for a little bit more volatility moves than looking for what? Momentum moves, right? Momentum moves are very difficult to catch because you got to be on the timing you got to be exactly on that timing. But you see in swings, I was able to swing out of Oxy and then get back into the name, taking a very minimal hit, getting back in and making a big gain. That's what it's all about for me on swing trading. Why? Because I really feel that I could go after the three to ones, the four to one outlooks, where at that point, I don't need to be so accurate on names I don't need to have the pressure of being 80, 90% accurate like some of your scalpers need to be. I can go ahead and just focus on what? Daily charts, daily setups, 
using intraday skills to try to get the best entry and then swinging it overnight to see if we can take first profits and then hold the rest break even. That's the way I like to go about it. All right, let's take a look here. 4.3 billion to the sell side. <sighs> wow, not what we wanted to see, right? Let's go ahead. Let's take a look how this reacts here on the market. You can see the SPY. I'm going to go to the five minutes so you guys can see a little bit closer before this 15 minute candle ends. And you can see how we're fighting on the downside action to that 387. JPM, 127.80s, looking like it wants to go a little lower here. So it doesn't look the best there for JPM. And I've been talking a hell of a lot today. I've even hear my voice slowing up a little bit, but I got you team. Smash the like button if you guys enjoying the show. All right, let's keep going. Let's take a look at what else is making a move. I didn't want to see a, a look into gold. So let's do that. All right, gold trade team. What do you guys think about the gold trade? Uh, GLD continuing to the upside here through 17 today. That doesn't look too bad. AU is one that I've been looking at. NEM, Newmont Gold. That got the lift through 45 today. That looked interesting for a 45 hold on the pullback. Now back up to 46. Gold doesn't look too bad here, team. I even traded PAAS today. Got stopped out of this name. So I do want to go ahead and let you guys know on that. Got stopped out of this one. Was looking for the move back up through 17. Got it around the 1690s. Stopped out into the 1680s. But we'll see what happens here on the silver name, PAAS. Will it make the move back through 17? Something that I'm keeping in mind. A silver trade here. Oxy, a little bit lower here towards the close. That looks good there for some of those oil names to continue the downside. Chevron, ooh, nice little down action there in Chevron. And how's the leader? ExxonMobil ending here. And could we be into the double digits here for ExxonMobil? No, let's go team, let's go. Sound that alarm, I'm ready team. Get to the chopper. chopper! Let's go. We'll see what happens. Is the oil trade done here? Something to keep in mind. Jay bringing up some earning plays for tonight. Adobe, Five, Grow, Groupon, YY tonight. Not really trying to do some earnings plays here on a day like today, but hey, who knows? And it's going to be Quad Witch this Friday. That could turn things around, right? That's going to be a lot of option expiration coming into play. So keep that in mind. All right, um, we'll see what else is going on in the market. I'm going to start wrapping up here, team. Unless you guys got some tickers you guys want to talk about, go ahead and drop them up. If not, I'm going to wrap it up here. Take a look to see if there's anything else I can get into towards the close. But overall, there was some stocks that did good today. Sentinel-1 had good earnings. That's still hanging on, even though it's pulling back here. App-loving with a nice little move here. I'm just looking at the biggest moves here from the day. So you got App, you got Asana with a nice little uplift. This is one stock that's staying strong, even though the market is, isn't, is right? So this recovered after doing kind of a little, little bit of a gap fill attempt. Now back up to 22. Will we get back up to this gap? 22, 22, something to keep an eye out for. I'll even set an alert here for Asana, a name that I didn't expect to see up, but it is up. Fastly. Also up here, trying to make a little move here. Let's go to the daily chart. Daily chart actually looks pretty decent here on Fastly. I, not a stock that I trade often, but above 15. This doesn't look too bad, right? You got the pullback towards 13. Bunch of attempts to try to get through this trend line. This looks like a decent pattern here. So we can go ahead and set an alert here above 15 10s to let me know when we get that breakout. WU, Western Union, getting a little bounce back today nothing that i'm stepping in front of there uh mdb uh, mongodb definitely uh starting to pull uh push back here but i don't trade this one often so i might leave this one alone here but it does look like it is trying to be back there to 220s that's kind of the levels to watch for on mdb one thing to note this could be kind of the undercut and rally type of trade i'm actually doing some videos on uh trade setups like this i might do the undercut and rally and and put that setup out. I, I do want to let you guys know a little bit more about some strategy videos that we're going to be bringing out. Of course, this has to do with kind of start swing trading. So I want to go ahead and start bringing out different strategies that you guys can be using 
One of them is the undercut and rally type of trade, which very similar setup here. When you're seeing stocks break through a support level and then you see this monster jump in volume, a lot of the times that could be buyers stepping in on that cut down and then the price comes right back up through the resistance. We'll see what happens there on MDB. And just one last one to bring in one more here. Unity, Unity with a little bit of a turnaround here on the day. Finally back into the green. Will we be trading some ARC tomorrow? Keep an eye out, right? Will growth names get the lift again? That's something to watch. It is trying to make the move back up there. Needs to make the breakout through 40. And we're going to have to watch some of these growth names take the lift. Today, Pack B getting a little bit of a push here on some healthcare names. Unity, Beam getting a little bit of a push up. Coinbase, this one looks interesting too. Believe it or not, I mean, I don't, I'm not bullish on Coinbase, but hey, it is a nice little setup here. If you can get this nice little break back above here towards the 70s, this looks decent here to start pushing back there. We'll see what happens if Coin could get into this space. And that's a nice little push to 70 and the 80s above. Captain Kirk said, I'm bot. Gush, Gush, you, you're going against me, man. You're going against me, Captain. What's up, bro? What's up? Nah, I'm just playing. That's what it's all about, man. If you see the other side of the coin, take the other side of the coin, man. Even if that means taking money away from me. Like always, we make our decisions. We stick to our guns. We what? We stick to our setups. That's what it's all about. Stick to your execution. Give yourself a pat on the back when you execute well, because that's really what's important too. Working on trying to get back into names is something that I tried to do this week. And today, Oxy, clear example that getting back into the name saved me from getting that nice next win, right? If I would have got out of these names and not gone back in, I would have got crushed. We'll see what happens because I, I would definitely have been feeling the FOMO as these names just kept going down, right? So we'll see what happens here with these names. we got to always keep working to improve our skills. Let's go to the SPY here. SPY looks like we're going to close right in between those numbers that we talked about. We didn't get to the top of it. We got to the bottom of it twice. 386, 87, 386.80s. It looks like it's trying to hold above the BWAP. A lot of that probably the bigger names holding up here. Apple still holding up above VWAP. Google still holding up above VWAP, right? How's Tesla? Tesla actually even holding up above VWAP. You never know. Tesla could make a little bit of a push here back towards the 184s. We'll find out tomorrow, team. Like always, you guys can catch me on Pre-Market Prep tomorrow morning, our flagship show, 8 a.m. Eastern, every single morning. And of course, don't miss live trading with Zunaid, Ryan, and I as we get through some trading action. So definitely smash the like button. Hope you guys enjoyed it. That's going to do it for today. Pencils down, pencils down. And keep working on those skills out there, traders. If you guys are swing traders, keep working on it. Reach out to me if you guys have any question. You guys want to talk about a setup. You guys want to talk about a trade. Reach out to me. You guys have the free open door here at Benzinga. You guys can reach out to me at email at mitch at benzinga.com. Or you guys can reach out to me on Twitter at moneymitchbz. People hit me up all the time on Twitter to tell me, hey, take a look at this. Or can you talk a little bit about this? By all means, reach out to me, team. I'm here for you guys. Hit the like, and I'll see you guys a little bit later. Like always, keep pushing forward, and we'll see what we are able to get tomorrow. Oil paid me well today, took some profits, and we'll look to see if they continue on the downside. If not, then who knows? Maybe Cap. Then Kirk will get that gush scalp. We'll find out. Hit the like button. We'll see you next time, team, and keep pushing on your skills. That's the only way to get better.